This podcast is brought to you by KimPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solutions for everyone and everywhere. And StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I hope you're having a great day. And if you've been tuning in lately, you know that we have been covering different ways that automakers, that organizations have been either re-strategizing or delaying or divesting in their electric plans, whatever they may be, from battery manufacturing to manufacturing the actual electric vehicles to just changing investment in general. And I know that that can be a headache. Re-strategizing a major portion of your business certainly is not taken lightly. And today we're looking at Mercedes' most recent update about their electrification plans, which is essentially kind of halving their original goals by 2030. You might look at this as bad news. You might look at it as something that is expected. I wouldn't say it's necessarily good news because it does point to a challenge in the market that exists I'm not necessarily surprised, I'll say off the bat, because I think there are some really lofty goals in the EV space and the sustainability space that is working in a world that hasn't been moving in this direction very strongly for a long time in a lot of regions. Some regions are far ahead, I know that, but widespread globally, we're definitely definitely behind a little bit in a lot of these goals. So over to the electrification goals of Mercedes-Benz. They will be delayed, like I said. Previously, they had planned for 100% electrified vehicle sales by 2030. Electrified refers to both fully electric vehicles and the hybrid plug-in electric vehicles as well. They have the Mercedes EQB, EQE, EQS models that are fully electric, and then also some plug-in hybrid electric models that are available, some only used. I don't think they're making new ones, but GLC, hybrid C-Class sedans, GLE, and plug-in S-Class for those electrified models. So they are forecasting 50% electrified by 2030. This is about five years behind their initial schedule, and currently they reported that electric vehicles, fully electric, are 11%, and electrified vehicles are 19% of sales. Is that low? I mean, perhaps with only six years into the future you're and you're running 100% looking at 2030, it might be kind of low, might not be on track. Mercedes expects that their electrified vehicles will remain around 19 to 21% of total sales. I'm guessing they're looking at the market, they're looking at what kind of customers they're getting. And in addition to not only delaying their fully electrified plans within the company, they also announced that they will have a new internal combustion engine lineup by 2027 that will extend into the 2030s. They surprisingly or surprisingly not shares increased with this news by 5.9%, which kind of indicates that investors agree with this strategy. Going electric is a challenge. Perhaps delaying it is a better financial move, strategy move, business model. It, it might be true, but we would love to see a more emphasis on electrified vehicles, but it doesn't seem like they've cracked the code on it quite yet. One small detail that does give a bit of hope is that the 48 volt hybrid systems from Bosch are in a shortage. So this may be causing slower sales for hybrids, meaning there's simply not enough inventory. So even so, the reality is that EV sales are slower than expected. So Mercedes is backing down from the EV commitments and investors, like I said, seem to agree with the strategy based on the numbers. And this comes off the heels of other major automaker announcements that we've spoken to before. Ford delaying and then cutting about, cutting about $12 billion in electric vehicle investments. They have postponed battery plants, a battery plant in Kentucky. GM has reintroduced plug-in hybrid EVs to the North American market as EV demand is lower than expected. They say that they remain committed to eliminating tailpipe emissions from their light duty vehicles by 2030, but in the 2035, excuse me, but in the interim, deploying plug-in hybrid technology in strategic segments will deliver some of the environment or environmental benefits of EVs as the nation continues to build this charging infrastructure, said CEO Mary Barra. So I know that some people think plug-in hybrids, why would you why would you need them? Just go fully electric or stay gas, but I don't know. 
I think maybe it could bring down some emissions, but it, it does seem to be an in-between way of, of getting there. But that could probably potentially p- appeal to a larger mass of people. I guess until infrastructure is there is what they're pointing to here. Honda, they scrapped collaboration plans with GM to build an affordable, less than $30,000 EV. Of course, they did work with GM to just take all of basically all of the GM Ultium build up for the Honda Prologue, and they put the Honda on the outside, but built by GM. They also have cited lower than expected demand for the reasoning behind this choice, and it would have been a $5 billion investment that is now completely canceled. But not all not all, auto, not all manufacturers are struggling with the EVs in the same way. Stellantis, for instance, turned a profit on EVs in 2023. And currently, yes, they do not have EVs in the US market, but the new Fiat 500e will be coming very soon. The, it's the first US bound vehicle rolled off the line on February 21st, 2024, just yesterday from when I'm filming this. So that cute little Fiat 500e will be on its way. So Stellantis does have something to show for this. They're keeping full speed on electrification. They're not stepping back and they're aiming for 100% of their European sales and 50% of their US sales to be fully electric by 2030, which is really great. It shows not everyone's struggling. What kind of approaches should we take? The European market is definitely different than the US market and the industry and the charging landscape as well. So maybe there's, no, there's certainly things we can learn from that that market. So 100% electrification goals by 2030 are extremely aggressive. Like I said at the top, they're very lofty goals in, in my opinion, and they seem to be a little bit unrealistic, especially in certain markets. EV adoption and sales over the past few months have been disappointing, and auto manufacturers have reacted immediately, and they're reconsidering their electrification goals, their big investments, and their big steps towards electric. And there are many people still skeptical about the pace of the electric revolution, and we're projecting, you know, tens of millions of EVs on the road by the end of the decade, the next decade. That is a pretty skyrocket growth, I'd say. And it seems like we are making solid progress in electric vehicles, but it's not you know, this exponential growth at this point. And it's probably a good thing that auto manufacturers are paying attention to the market and adjusting accordingly. Although we want electrification, you know, it doesn't have to be forced upon people quite yet. Some of you might disagree. They might think that this is just really the environmental move, Uh, but this is, you know, transportation. And we can't, I think, have just a very dramatic immediate shift, of course, and it's not great for all use cases people who live in apartments and can't charge, people without regular charging for whatever reason. Ignoring the market and blindly going full electric vehicle could lead to poor sales, excess inventory, factory layoffs, and, you know, potentially bankruptcy if you really go about it the wrong way. So it's important to remember that manufacturers aren't completely abandoning EVs altogether. Some are absolutely thriving, and they're still investing in EVs, but the pace is slower than expected, and they're adjusting hopefully accordingly. Plug-in hybrid electric vehicles and hybrids have environmental benefits too, although they might not be the fully electric option that a lot of us want to see more of. What do you think? Stellantis is turning a profit. Mercedes says this is not enough for us to meet our 100% electrified goals by 2030. We're actually going to launch a whole ICE line. Interesting, you know, Mercedes is also launching their whole North American charging network as well, partnership with Bucky's. So you're going to see those around if you're in the Southeast. Maybe Bucky's are all over the US. I know I've only been to them in the Southeast. So they they do have, of course, the investment here. That's a lot of money going into the charging infrastructure. So just some readjustment on the electrified front. Let me know what you think in the comments. Does, do you think this is bad news? Do you think this is just adequate reaction to the to the free market? Let me know. What do you think should be done? What should we be looking forward to by 2030? What will the real picture be? I think we are still definitely in 2024 and not so sure what it will look like, but there are some lofty goals out there that we're being thoughtful about at the very least. Thank you for plugging in with me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time on the next Out of Spec podcast episode. Bye-bye.